there are a lot of tutorials that show you how to install Cleopatra. So I'm not repeating that process once again. However, I'm trying to explain to you how to generate a public and private key pair. I understand there are tutorials further too, but I'm trying to showcase the mistakes I've done so that you won't repeat it again. So once you open Cleopatra, go to File, click on New Open PGP Key Pair. This may not be the option because it's kind of latest version right now. Maybe if you download the older version or updated version, if you're seeing this later in the course, you may find it different. But however, just click on New Open PGP uh, to generate a new key pair. So I'm going to uh, give a name like John. Email address is john at gmail.com. This is not mandatory. In previous versions, I think it is mandatory now. So you can protect this. Keep it with a password. So check this box. Do not forget to click on advanced settings. I forgot this actually and I wasted quite a bit of time. So click on advanced settings and then select RSA. You don't need this. I recommend it is 2048 bits. And then coming to certificate usage, I don't want signing. I want only encryption and valid until you can give a validity. If I don't give validity, it will be valid forever. So I am unchecking this because I want my private key pair, public and private key pair to be valid forever. And then click on OK. Now click on OK again. It is going to ask you a passphrase. Remember this. Click on OK. It says passphrase should be at least eight characters long. I can enter a new one, but I want to go with my old password because this is just for testing purposes. But I recommend you to create a strong password. Now I'll take this one anyway. So new PGP is created. Click on OK. What we just created is a key pair. It has both public and private key. Let's see how we can how we can extract those things. This is what I just created. This is the key pair. Right click on it and export. Once you click on export, it is going to export you a public key by default. Click on export and I'm going to desktop and I'm going to folder called PGP. And I'm saving this as John underscore public key. That's it. Click on save. Similarly, you can also export a private key, which is backup secret keys. Click on this. In the same directory, I'm going to name this as John underscore PUB underscore key. Sorry, it's private key, right? So PRV underscore key. Click on save. Once you click on save, it is going to ask for passphrase. Just enter your passphrase. Click on OK and backup of secret keys saved. Now let's go to file folder where I saved both my keys. So here is my private key and here is my public key. If you observe, both of them are with an extension ASC. We can open this with any notepad. Open with notepad. This is my private key and it starts with begin PGP private key block and then end PGP private key block. I'm showing this just for your reference. Do not share it with anybody or show it to anybody. Let me close this and open public key as well. Click on open with notepad and that should give you public key as well. Now let's go ahead and change this to PGP extension and see what happens. Rename. You see, contents were unchanged. Even though it's PGP, they're still holding their content within themselves. Both private key and public key are still 
remaining with their contents. I'm maintaining this PGP because I want to encrypt and decrypt a message using Java programming with PGP keys. That is the reason I'm still saving these keys with extension PGP.